perfect. Better tell this guy's time to come on. on. Absolutely. Hey, Max, you love two whip, minutes. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to roll, brothers. Look at that pretty woman right back there, smiling big as can be. Last time I hugged you was in Ohio. I'm not going to hug you yet, maybe after service, because I don't want that Ohio hug to rub off yet. Yeah, and to love on your parents. They received me just like they knew me for years. Because I'm sure that you talked to me, talked to him about us, you know. It was nice. Well, I loved him back. He ain't no different. I am. He's a big man just like me. Probably I'll be the same way. When I get older like him, I'll probably be in a chair. The way it goes, you know? How are you, buddy? Welcome back. Hi, Kev. How you doing, buddy? I love it, Roger. Any problems? I'm right down in front there. Just give you a holler. I'll be right up here. Well, they'll know. Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Y'all live down here in Inglewood, Florida. Amen. 
Good to see you today. Man, I'm thrilled to see you. I was in Ohio last weekend marrying off Roger and Lisa's daughter. They drug my tail to Ohio. I should have called you. Yeah, I was right there. I was in Hocking Hills. How far are you from there? About an hour and a half. Amen. I was right in there doing a wedding and me and Kim and I, I took her along with me and said, well, we, we, we may as well have a, a good time out of this trip. So I drug her along and somebody else kept the young ones for us. And we had a beautiful time together, just a time to love each other. Amen. And we need that. And uh, I don't know if she needs it as much, but I needed it. Amen. I need to love on her some. So it was beautiful. I had a great time together. Look, there's the wedding, just in case you think I was out fooling around. No, there it is. Let's thank the Lord for little Taylor that got married eight years old when I baptized her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get on our feet today. If today's your first time at Fellowship Church, I'm so glad you're here. You matter. You have value. We love you. You might say, you don't even know me. How can I love you? I love you because he loved me. And when I keep that in mind, I can love. Amen. And you need to realize that. You might say, well, I'm not loved. Nobody loves me. Well, Jesus loves you. And he's got some folks called believers in Christ that's going to love you. And right here, fellow, and I can't help what other churches do, but I can help what this one does. Amen. Say, we're going to love Jesus and we're going to love who? Flat out. Amen. Come on. Let's thank God we live in America. Come on. Woo! Amen. Come on. And evil happens. There's somebody called the devil and he's wicked. And somebody like that, that joker out there in Las Vegas that guns down people, takes their life. I tell you what, we're talking about the Antichrist this morning. I'm doing a series called Something Wicked Comes. And we, you know, you got Halloween and all this made up mess. I'm going to tell you something right now. The Bible is full of the fact that we have an adversary the devil goes about as a roaring lion that's what we see before our very eyes and a horrible tragedy like that and people are left to try to pick up the pieces that they're never going to get picked up when they've lost somebody they love so be in prayer for those folks and love on people and care for people and watch out for your neighbor you hearing me yes or no be alert be vigilant care for people amen make inglewood your town and not a vacation spot there are people walking by you every day that need love, that need encouragement. Don't wait till you get back home, wherever that is, to do it. How about do it now? Amen? Say, you never know what a day's going to bring. God bless you. Man, I'm full up today. I'm running my mouth a lot, ain't I? Hey, I missed you. Did you hear me? I missed you. Y'all tell me you miss me. Let me tell you, it's a two-way street, baby. I'm going to tell you that right now. I miss you. When I'm away from you, I think of you, and I miss you. I must be a nut, huh? I know. I love you. I miss you. Come on. You wore out, son? You'll notice an empty chair there today. Miss Karen's not here today. Miss Karen got the horrible news that her daddy passed this week. And Miss Karen might be watching right now online, her and Larry. But we love them. And I knew her daddy. And he came to church many times over the years. He's a faithful man of God. He's home with the Lord today. But she's sad and she's back up there in, in the Ohio area and northern Kentucky area right in through there. But let's keep her in prayer too, okay, and that family. But when you see that empty seat over there, you think of Miss Karen today. Amen? Praise the Lord. One more time. Let's thank God we church this morning. Come on. Let's go. A brand new song, a brand new song for the praise band. Let's go. Forever rain. Let's go. Come on. Where y'all at?
Your love awakens. Your love awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Amen? And boy, a lot of us need to hear that today. From where we've come from, some folks like, many of you like me, raised in a hell hole of a home. You know, crazy. Not knowing a thing about Jesus. Not knowing much about love. Knowing how, I was trained pretty well how to live life crazy. Amen? But thank God. That he loves us all. The ground's level at the cross. Crazy people like me can be saved just like the folks that know a whole lot better. Amen? God's good to us. Amen? Your love awakens me. Son, what's the next song we sing? Uh, Forever Rain. Is that a new song too? No, no. You're trying to kill us right out the front. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. We like new. We like them to learn. Amen? By the way, next Sunday night, we'll have the full praise band. Miss Karen back, Miss Jacqueline as well. 
And it'll be at 5 p.m. Got an incredible praise concert right here. Amen. Thank you, the Lord, for sparing our homes, for sparing our city. Amen. Say. And we're going to praise him next Sunday night. That's what we're going to do. Amen. Come on. I don't care what you got to do. Drag your tail here next Sunday night. Doesn't matter. And then we're going to feed you afterwards. How about that? And we're going to have renewal of wedding vows at 4.30. Thanking God for our wives, our husbands, our family. Amen. Next Sunday night. Amen. Forever rain. You all right, son? You got that look on your face. You all right? New songs. I'm just trying to remember them. You, new songs? All right. Come on. Let's do it. You are good. You are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love. You are love. On this faithful road to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in, you are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace, so when my fear is crippling, you are true, you are true. Jesus! 
the world forever I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace the light of the world Well, two nice brand new songs this morning. Praise the Lord, guys. Love that. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for loving us. Lord, thank you for letting us know we matter, that we have value. Lord, you told us right in your word that you created us in your image and in your likeness. And Lord, we sinned and we've all sinned. No one in this room would deny that, Lord. Not in our right mind, we wouldn't deny. We wouldn't deny that we've sinned. And Lord, you didn't throw us out with the trash. You didn't leave us on our way to a devil's hell. But Jesus, you came. God, you so loved us that you gave your one and only son, Jesus, so that we could have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, that you tell us that if we believe, we can be saved. If we believe, we can go to heaven. We can have our sins forgiven. Thank you, Lord, that that ground is level. Lord, you didn't ask us to have to buy our way there, or work our way there. It'd be, it'd be bad news for a lot of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can simply come by faith, trust, believe in your son, Jesus. Father, I pray that not a soul, not one of us, will leave this room today and walk out that, those doors and get in our car and turn that key in that car without knowing. When it's our time to go, we're going to go be with Jesus. I pray that, pray that not a one here in this room or listening on radio or listening online, not one would be lost, but that all would be saved. I pray you'll help us humble ourselves, Lord. You're not going to listen to us if we're full of ourselves. So Lord, I pray everyone here will humble themselves today. If they need to reject wrong teaching or wrong ideas or wrong ways, whatever we have to do, help us humble ourselves and believe in you, Jesus. That's my prayer today. I know, Lord, you're not willing that any should perish. Not one. So Lord, I pray that you'll deal with our stubborn will and our hard head. And we'll be humble today and put our faith in Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated if you would. Thank you so much. Well, I was driving on the roads of Ohio last week trying to have church with you, and I heard Miss Rachel's announcements, but I was buffering. You know what buffering is? I don't know what buffering is. I'm as old-fashioned as the hills, man. Man, I even had a new cell phone and couldn't hear. I was frustrated. I finally told Kim, just cut it off. I'm going crazy. I'm going to hit somebody. But anyway, I did hear your announcements. You do such a great job. Can we thank the Lord for Rachel, what she does? Come on. Praise the Lord, girl. God bless you. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to Fellowship Church again on behalf of Pastor Clark. We do want to welcome you. If this is your first time with us today, we want you to let us know that it is your first time today because we want to give you a present. So let us know out in the lobby. There's a table right outside these doors. Um, nice person standing there. She's going to greet you and uh, maybe give you a hug. Um, so don't be alarmed. But um, she's also going to give you a present um, just for coming and worship worshiping with us today. Also, we want to know how you found us. So take the time to fill out the guest registry in your worship guide. Drop it in the offering bag as it goes by. Pastor loves to read those. And he wants to know how you found us here at Fellowship Church. And I was going to add, you know, those of them that are watching online, line box 121 they can send a note of encouragement to you right in your mailbox I know you would so those of you watching online you can do that as well so welcome today we have our YFF tonight which is our young family fellowship this is for all of our families young families to come on out bring your kids um, stay with them and have a great time of fellowship together. We're going to give you dinner um, and just let the kids play. I don't know if there's going to be water there tonight. It's probably hot, so there's probably going to be something wet, but you can be rest assured. It's pretty much until December. It's going to be hot. So, um, But tonight at 530, right at the park, right up here on parade. So come on out, families, and just have a great time tonight. 
Care Breakfast is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. There's still time to sign up today if you're wanting to come and join this breakfast tomorrow morning. This is a great time. Um, Elise will be out in the lobby to answer any questions that you have. This is all free. Breakfast will be there for you. So come on out and listen to what Care is about and listen to Elise share her story. Amen. And guys, I'd love to have you out tomorrow. I'll be here as well. And uh, you know, my daughter Elise, my mother was murdered by my stepdad. And so this domestic violence hits our family pretty hard. Couldn't be harder than it hit us. And so I thank the Lord that Elise has this, this uh, path that she's chosen, at least for now, to reach out to victims, amen, and people hurting. And this is the way we can get together tomorrow, free breakfast, and you'll hear Elise tell her story. And it'll be good, last an hour, because we gotta go to work, okay? Say, and that's tomorrow, and it's free of charge. If you'll sign up, we got plenty of room. Love to have you. All right, we have um, several Bible study opportunities this week with our men's Bible study on Monday morning. We have a men's community Bible study on Tuesday evening right here at the church. We have a Bible study fellowship for both men and women on Thursday and a women's home Bible study on Friday at 10 a.m. in the Jackson home. And we have brand new Bible study opportunities. We have our Play the Man study, which is Monday at 6.30, and you can see Ronnie Jackson for more information about that. We have a Love and Respect or repect, whatever, respect couples class on Wednesday at seven o'clock. I love you, Roger. Um, we've got 10 couples at the Fellowship Worship Center. And if you, um, do we have any more room for that, Dave? We have four more spots for that love and respect couples class. And we also have a woman's book of John study on Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, right here, second and fourth Thursdays. And you can see Joanne Riddle for um, more information on that. So awesome opportunities. And our women's Bible study is continuing, ladies, on Mondays at 6.30. And this is not something that you can join. You have already had joined it. Um, so do your homework, ladies, and come on out, and we'll see you tomorrow night. And we have a bluegrass concert and dinner at Jason's Deli coming up um, this Saturday. So if you want to join um, a group from Fellowship Church for this, you want to see um, the Beamishes for more details. The cost is $10 per person, and the concert begins at 1 o'clock. And next Sunday, like Pastor said, at 5 o'clock, we're going to have our Night of Praise Worship concert with all of us. So we're excited. Invite someone to come on out. Um, you won't be sorry that you came. So come on out next Sunday. We also have our Senior Fellowship Luncheon Thursday, October 19th at 11 a.m. right here in our lobby. We ask that you do sign up. We also ask that you bring a side dish or a dessert um, to go with um, the meal, whatever it is. I'm sure it'll be delicious. And this is new. Look at this. Look, Look at this. You Look know, how many, how many times did I say to you, Ray, we really need to have a women's prayer breakfast. Yeah. Not for this men getting fed on a Saturday morning. Once a month. Sausage, Once a month. Biscuits and gravy. Like, we like that stuff, too. So, anyway, ladies, on October 28th at 9 a.m., right here at our Fellowship Church Foyer, we are going to have a women's prayer breakfast. We are asking that you sign up for that. So, ladies, do sign up for that. I know I'm excited. So, nice. um, hopefully, we'll have a big turnout. One hour from 9 to 10. One, one hour. hour. Not four hours. One hour. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try You're to do it. In it. One hour. <laughs> this might be why we don't have women's prayer breakfast. <laughs> All right, it is that time of the year, October, and we need candy. We need candy for our safe walk. This is a, um, um, an event that happens every year down on Dearborn. It is huge. Thousands of kids Amen. and their families are coming out. They block off Dearborn, and it's just a safe place for them Amen. to come. All the businesses along that street give out candy, and since our radio station is right there, we get to plop right down in front of there, and we can yeah. give out candy too. So um, we do need that candy, so bring it out. Nice wrapped candy, all the good stuff. We want to give away the good stuff. We also have our hospitality cafe right after this service, right outside. It's free for you, so go out there and enjoy some pastries and juice and coffee and just fellowship with your friends and family. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Thank you, Miss Rachel. All right, guys, where you at? Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get back up on our feet, guys. I have one more song this morning for you. Amen. Before our offering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work here. And we've been saying it for years and years and years. If you can't give what? Cheerfully. Then what? Keep it. In case you didn't hear, we say if you can't give cheerfully, then keep it. You might wonder, well, that's an odd thing for a preacher to say. I thought it was two years ago when I started saying it. I thought, my goodness, if I say that, we're going to go broke. Amen. Especially men, we don't like to give sometimes. That's just the way it is. But I'm going to tell you, I started saying, if you can't give cheerfully, keep it. And I'll tell you where that came from. 
The first time I went to church, my mother would watch Billy Graham while she's drunk one night sitting in a chair in Rockingham, North Carolina, back in the day when Billy Graham came on the main TV stations, before remote control even came out. I came home and my drunk mama said, we're going to church in the morning. And I cussed her out. The words I said, you don't even want to think about. Next morning, mama got up. We didn't have a car. She's a crazy person. What are you doing? So we walked to church. And there was one reason I went. Not because of Jesus. I went so some preacher wouldn't take our last dollar. And I had never been to church. But already in my mind, I had this idea that the church is going to steal from us. They're going to take from us. So that's why I say that here. If you can't give cheerfully, keep it. We're not here to take from you. We're here to give to you. We're here to love you. We're here to, to care for you. Amen? Yes or no? And God will have to take what we give and multiply it and meet our needs. That's what's going to happen here. Amen? We just came through 17 hard, hot weeks of summertime when we have our lowest attendance throughout the year. Guess what? Every need was supplied all summer long. Can we thank Him for that? Come on. Come on. That's a big church. That's a big church, big campus, big bills. But one of them ain't a mortgage. Amen. Say, debt free for the glory of God. Amen. Come on. So thank God. But thank you today for giving. We, I appreciate it. And you will be blessed if you give. I'm not going to promise you're going to get no new house or new car like they do on TV. I'm not going to promise if you give, you're going to get your healing. I'm not going to do that because that's bull. Excuse me. We give because people need the Lord. And they need a light. I had a sweet lady, Laurie, I believe, or Laura, saw me this morning. I said, how'd you find fellowship? She said, well, how could I not find it? It's everywhere. Did you know it takes money to put it out everywhere? But it's worth it for Laura's and others to come and to come here and to find the Lord. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. That's why we exist. Amen. Yes or no? So thank you for giving today. Help us if you would. If you can do it cheerfully, I got a feeling God will bless us real, real, real good. Amen. Word of God speak. One of my favorite all-time songs. Let's sing it, church. Come on. Word of God speak. Finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is. Okay, last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say, word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see. Your majesty to be still and know you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God
had lost the words and the funny thing is it's okay amen let's praise the lord this morning for great worship thank you guys a couple of new songs as well appreciate you appreciate you Thank you for giving. Appreciate you helping and doing what you're doing. And it makes all the difference in the world. And I tell you what, I hold my head up around town. I tell you right now, I hold my head up. Alex started being our administrator about 13, 14 years ago. And uh, I told him, when you get a bill, pay it. Pay it. Just pay it. Get a bill, pay it. Why we leave it lay around? Pay the bill. Amen. Say, I don't like bills hanging around. I like them gone. Get them out of here. Amen. Say, that's the kind of church you're part of. Did the same thing with the builder when we built this building. Uh oh, hush now. No, you're all right. Now play something in a minute though. Thank. You. But listen, listen. Don't no play something in a minute. Hang on. Don't don't leave me. Don't leave me. But uh, when we built the building years ago, that's how we negotiated with the builder. Cash. You send us what work was done, we'll pay you right away. If you want to come get it on that Friday, you can, or we'll ride it up to you to Bradenton. Amen? Say. So it works. Thank you for giving, guys. It's a big, 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 big deal. We appreciate you. Barney, come pray for us. But it's so good to have you back. God bless you, man. I miss you guys. Amen. Come on. Let's pray together. Come on. Father, we want to thank you mm. and praise you this morning, we Lord, do. for how good and wonderful you are to Glad us. Thank you, Lord, that we can be back in our church hall. Amen. Lord, we ask that you bless this offering this morning. Bless the gift mm. from the giver. Amen. Bless and anoint your word as it comes Please. forth. And let it minister to our hearts and our lives and draw us nearer and closer to mm. you. We ask it in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Amen, buddy. Love you back, man. Glad to have you, man. Glad to have you back. Amen. Yeah. 
old man. Man, that's old school music right there, amen? I'm telling you, this new school music all young and everything, I'm telling you, the old school music will kill you. I sang those two new songs with them today. Didn't lose my breath at all. Is that the truth or what? So people say old school music is just so slow. It's no good. That's bull. That stuff's fast and it'll kill you. Tell you, if you sing it with life, amen? Come on, let's go to the Word this morning. Amen. Here we go. Thanks, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, I got one right there on that bench. Thank you. We'll let Roger get started. I'm going to take a quick drink if you don't mind. Nope. I drink stuff that probably the Lord's going to tell me, you know, I got there early because I shouldn't drink Diet Coke and mess like that. I know, I know. Don't come up to me later and tell me. I've been working on it, okay? Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all all right? Good. Amen. I think I'll live now. See how it goes. We're just going to chunk that back there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pick it up later. Let's go to the word this morning. Here we go. Something wicked comes. Now I'm telling you, most churches in America, especially those ones that are growing, they tell you, don't you ever preach on stuff like this. You need to make people feel good, you know, and love on, pat them on. I love all that. Make you feel good. Love on you. But listen, this is the word of God. We're not going to pick and choose parts we don't like. Oh, I don't like that. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, join the club. You never grow unless you go over stuff like this, okay? So, Something Wicked Comes. What a terrible title, series title. That was right from the Bible. You'll see here in just a second. Let's go. Something Wicked Comes. Now, Rogers picked all the spooky pictures, though. I had nothing to do with that, okay? Isn't it good to have Rog back? Let's tell him thank you. Amen. Come on. Good to have you back, baby. Amen. Come on. Me and Raj, man, we're partners. We've been doing this for years. We even go to Ohio and marry his daughter together. I mean, we're crazy. Amen. He's traveled with me to Carolina. He's traveled with me to Colorado. And we've had a good time together. I appreciate him. Let's go with the word, Raj. Push me. Today's message, the Antichrist. You hear about the Antichrist in the Bible? A lot of people have heard about the Antichrist, but don't know a whole lot about the Antichrist. Is the Antichrist real? What is that? Let's talk about it today. Let's try to put the cookies on the bottom shelf. So we can understand. Let's see what we can find today. We'll start in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse number 1. And if you're watching with us online, thank you so much. I know what that feels like. I was with you last week watching. And it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice to have church. Thank you so much. I got folks right here from Rochester. About three out of four Sundays, at least, y'all are away, if not more. And y'all sit there and watch. And you have your table set. And you got your breakfast. And you got the big TV. I don't know how big your TV is, but it's a big one. Amen. Come on. I appreciate y'all watching. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Say that part with me right there. That ye be not soon shaken in your mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now keep in mind, written about 2,000 years ago. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Speaking of the Antichrist, we'll see that later. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God. Or that is worshipped. So that he is God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse 8. Here's where our title came from. Say it with me. And then shall that, say it with me, wicked be revealed. Something wicked comes. Amen. That wicked is coming. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of who? Say it with me. And you see Satan working already. You see it in our world. 
If you don't believe in a devil, I don't know how in the world you make sense of the chaos in our world and what we see. The Bible says, this one coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. With all deceivableness. That's the second time we've seen that word deceive. Is Satan a deceiver, yes or no? Of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So let's, let's unpack it a little bit, see what we can find today. The Antichrist. Roger, I'm just going to ask you to push me, buddy. So, who is the Antichrist? He is the imposter and opposer of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you something. Antichrist is already at work in our world. I say it with sadness today that a lot of churches in our country, forget the world, but in our own country, will have church on a Sunday morning and not speak solidly of Jesus Christ. It will be more of a feel-good message, and I'm not trying to be ugly. It's the truth, guys. That's called the spirit of Antichrist. We have a purpose here at Fellowship Church, and that's to proclaim Jesus Christ. Say it with me. We love who? Jesus, and we love who? Why didn't we put God on the, when, in our stuff? We love God, and we love people. Because God gave his son, Jesus. And that's the only way you can be saved is by putting your faith in Jesus. And Jesus is a name that divides, but it's also a name that tells people who you are. You hear me, yes or no? So people, when they look at us, they go, oh, that fellowship church, that fancy campus, and that crazy preacher out there, I wonder what they believe. And they can look and say, when they hear us, when they come here, they can say, well, they believe in Jesus. That's who they believe in. Amen. Say, it's who we are. I don't want to pull the wool here. I don't want to line up with the devil or the antichrist. He's an imposter of Jesus Christ. This is how Satan works, by the way. Let's look at some scripture. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And, and, and don't marvel, guys. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I mean, usually if the thing's really, really, really bad, I mean, it's horrible, it's really going to hurt us, we don't go down that path, but Satan just dangles it and it looks so good, it looks so fun, it looks so exciting. Man, he's a fool. He, he's, he fools us. All right, he's transformed into an angel of light. Verse 15, therefore it is no great thing if his what? If his what? Ministers. If his what? Ministers. Also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their what? Works. Satan's been doing this for a long time. So the Antichrist, he will be anti. What does that mean when you see anti, 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 anti? Well, it means what it means. It means he's against Christ. He's an opposer of Christ. So when you see the word Antichrist, it's the one who comes that's against Christ. Say that with me. He is what? Against Christ. Satan is against Christ. Quit rubber stamping things in your life that are evil and calling it good. If it's against Christ, it's against Christ. Do y'all hear me or not? Say, don't be playing that. Don't be, don't be part of the Antichrist or part of Satan's game. So anti means to stand over or in opposition to. This is who Antichrist is. He stands against. Satan stands against Jesus Christ. Revelation 19. Lots of scripture today. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him, Jesus, who sat on the horse and against his army. He's the opposer of Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians, we just read it. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God or that is worshiped so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Isn't that what Satan said in, in the book of Ezekiel? Other places as well. He said... When Satan fell, I will rise. I will be above God. I will exalt myself above the heavens. That's always been his plan. And God put him down. And you and I think if we exalt ourselves, if we come up with another way to get to heaven, I'm a good person. I give money. I go to church. Listen, you think he's not going to put you down too? Say, we humble ourselves at his feet. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe you died on the cross. There is no other answer he's going to accept. Yes or no? He created this beautiful angel that rebelled. You don't think he'll reject you in a heartbeat? Well, that's not a God of love. God's a God of justice and holiness and righteousness. And he's not going to go against himself and who he is to please you or me. Amen or oh me. Amen. Tough talk. 
How about the Antichrist in the Bible? Well, the Apostle John uses the term Antichrist five times. Five times. These little books are really small, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. And he mentions it five times. Let's look at them. Little children, it's the last time or last days. As you have heard, say it with me, that who? Antichrist shall what? Come. Even now as there are many, many Antichrists. You take a guy that'll set up in a building there in Las Vegas with thousands of rounds of ammunition and mow people down. He's an antichrist and he's burning in a devil's hell. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay? You no, no need to pray for him. He's done. You hear me? Yes or no? Pray for those victims. That spirit of antichrist is at work. In the world today, I mean, Christianity is exciting, it's powerful, it's the way, the truth, the light, there's no other way. But I tell you what, it's more of a minority than we probably realize. The spirit of Antichrist has taken over our globe. Jesus is coming soon, I believe it. I want to live like that. There are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last days. That's what that's saying. Another time, so little children. Keep, so Antichrist will come. Same verse, little children, it's the last days if you've heard that the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, many Antichrists. There are many people that are against Christ, many teachings that are opposed to Jesus Christ. It's out there, forces that are against Jesus Christ. Third time, John, John mentions it. Who is a what? Say it with me. Liar. But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Guys, y'all need to get that down. When you tell your friends and your family, I know this is tough. You're like, I got up to church this morning. He's killing me. That's all right. You'll live. When you tell your friends and family who believe in some other way other than Jesus Christ, that you know, it's, it, it doesn't really matter. It's, you know, it's, we're all going to the same place. And we're not all going to the same place. And it does matter. And if you don't stand up and if you're not salt and light and do it in a loving way, you are a representative of Antichrist. You're lying to them. Are you hearing me or not? And guys, we do it because we don't want to offend. We do it because we're lazy. Okay, I get it. I, I don't want to offend people at times. I'm lazy at times. I get that. Crazy Joel Olstein, excuse me. He went on, he went on CNN years ago and said that, that Jesus was not the only way to get to heaven. Thank God a backlash rose up and he had to apologize publicly. Amen, say. And heaven help, help us that he don't ever make that mistake again. Yes or no? I know that's ugly. Joel's a lot nicer than I'll ever be. Okay? <laughs> Listen, Antichrist is a liar. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. That's Antichrist. So instead of worrying about when the Antichrist is going to come, worry about when his spirit's working in you. Amen or oh me? I don't want to deny that Jesus is the Christ. He denies that Jesus Christ is the anointed one. Okay? So does Islam. Yeah, but they're good people. Eh, they're not. You cannot say that. You can't say that when people deny that Jesus Christ is the anointed one, the son of the living God, the one who can save you from your sins, but some joker that came along in 600 who couldn't even read or write, Mohammed's a guy you need to follow. That is crazy. Yes or no? Sorry. And out of that craziness comes all kinds of killing. You know, ISIS is now taking credit for the guy shooting in Las Vegas. Taking credit saying he converted six months earlier. I don't know if it's true or not. Wouldn't surprise me. He denies the father-son relationship. Okay, that's what Antichrist does. Religions that deny that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and that he is God is Antichrist. Have I lost you today? You're like, man, my head's spinning. You ought to have my head. My head's really spinning. Number four, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. People that say, Gee, you don't believe in Jesus, do you? You know, that he came born of a virgin, yep. That he lived, mm-hmm. 
that he died on the cross and rose again. Because you know what? When I deny that he's come in the flesh, I am the spirit of Antichrist. Y'all hear me or not? So this idea of Antichrist, man, why are you studying Antichrist? Well, A, it's all through the Bible. And B, we learn so much as Christians on how we're supposed to act and teach and think and do when we study stuff like this. I'm very good at, at seeing the opposite and, the, you know, I, I'm good at that. I'm pretty good at, in my life. If you say, this is wrong, don't go there. This is right, go here. I'm sort of thick-headed. If you give me black or white or right or wrong, I'm per, I can, you know, I can make a good decision. Amen, say. Sometimes I don't. But my point is, this ain't, this ain't watery ground here, baby. Y'all hear me or not? This is pretty simple stuff. Okay? So where have you heard that it should come even now is already in the world? John was saying this spirit where people are denying Jesus, here it had just happened a few years prior when he's writing this. He said they're already denying that it happened. Well, you move the clock 2,000 years forward, I'm telling you, a lot of people deny that it happened. People call you and me an idiot because we believe that verse 1 in the Bible, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. You understand or not? You don't believe in creation, do you? Yeah, I do. Why wouldn't? It's the first verse in the Bible. Are you kidding me or what? Say. Saw a new thing this week in the paper. They've connected us now to, you know, some other Neanderthal and it was longer than it was thought or whatever. I'm reading this goofy monkey stuff and it's the craziest stuff. And here are people with degrees and they're studying. I can't imagine getting up to work every day and going and doing your little math you do and what have you. I, man, I'd want to jump off a bridge. Are you hearing me say? Get an education to go and do that? It's the spirit of Antichrist that denies Christ. It's the spirit of Antichrist that denies his word. I know that's strong teaching. You need to embrace it. It's up to you. I know what I'm going to do. The message of Antichrist says that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Wrong. Lie. He's a liar. Fifth time, John. And by the way, John, the beloved apostle, was the nicest of all the apostles, we believe. I mean, he was nice. He was a disciple that Jesus loved. He's a disciple that was always close to Jesus. He's letting it rip. Isn't he saying? Such a nice fella. So you, I just want to be nice. You're never going to be as nice as John was. Even as nice as he was, he knows there's sometimes you need to cut the corn and lay it down. And this is what he's doing. For many deceivers are into the world who confess not that Jesus has come in the flesh. Say it with me. This is a what? And a what? Listen. Anytime we get up and we call us ourselves a church and we spend time together. And we're doing that to not promote Jesus Christ and just to tell you some other way is a good way. We're deceiving people. Amen. I don't want to be lined up with this. The Antichrist denies that Jesus is coming again. For many deceivers are into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That word right there, come in the flesh, when you look at that Greek and break it apart, the idea is that Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. They who confess that Jesus Christ is coming again. So the Antichrist denies that Jesus is coming again. And a lot of the church today doesn't believe that Jesus is coming again. I don't understand. I don't understand a lot. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If you believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, and he, and he lived a life, sent his life, and he died on the cross, and he rose from the dead, and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father right now making intercession, oh, but I don't believe he's coming again. I mean, all that other stuff you believe pretty hard too. Amen. Say so, I think the best thing is to let God be true and every man a liar. Believe his word in parts you don't understand. When you get to heaven, you can ask him. But down here, down here, don't second guess him. Amen? I don't like people that, that you know, two-faced. Tell you one thing to your face. Oh, I love Jesus on Sunday, but you second guess him all week long. Believe him. Believe his word. Amen? Hide it in your heart. So, the Antichrist opposes Jesus Christ. Let's see what we just learned. He's against that Jesus is the anointed one. He's against the God the Father and God the Son relationship. This is in the book of 1 and 2 John. He's against that Jesus Christ came in the flesh to be the sacrifice for our sins. He's against the promise that Jesus Christ will return to rule and reign as Messiah and Lord on this earth. Now, don't you look at that right there. 
put it back. That's so much of what the church, even of Jesus Christ, refuses to believe today. Is the spirit of Antichrist already at work? Absolutely. It was in John's day. It even so, it, it's even more so in our day. It's time for us to be vigilant, to live for the Lord, to double down on our faith, to believe what we believe and not play games, monkey around. I'm coming to church, so maybe I go to heaven. If you come to church because you may be going to heaven, there's probably a good chance you're going to hell. Come on to church. Hear about the Lord. Humble yourself. Yeah, but grandma believed this and granddaddy believed that. And I'm, I'm, I'm rejecting my heritage. You're not rejecting grandma. You're just rejecting some false teaching. Amen. Yes or no? And it takes humility. It takes humility to say, you know what? Man, I didn't have it right. And I'm going to repent. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to do what God's way says. That God gave his son for me and I can't buy it. I can't earn it. I'm going to have to believe it. And I'm going to commit my life to him. Do that. Different biblical names given to the Antichrist. Let's look at them. All through your Bible. Jesus referred to him as the abomination of desolation. Matthew 24. Jesus speaking. When therefore you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whoso reads let him understand. Abomination of desolation. Jesus referred to him as a false Christ, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall sh show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they should do what? They should do what? Deceive the very what? And guys, I know this comes across a little bit tough today, but the point is we're easily deceived if we're not careful. Yes or no? Amen. I like to get along with people. I want to be nice. I know it's hard for you to believe this morning. He went to Pennsylvania and Ohio and came back meaner than a snake. No, I too, like you, want to get along. I love people. I love people. I can go anywhere. I, everywhere I was at this last week, I thought I could start a church right here. I could start a church right here. I could start a church right here. Because I'm just loving on people. And people love to be loved. And to be talked to and know that they matter and have value. But as I'm talking to people, I need to realize, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, I don't want to deny Christ. I want to stand for the Lord. I'm not going to hide from him. I'm going to be who I am. Amen. Come on. Jesus referred to him as the one who comes in his own name. One of the saddest verses in the Bible is this verse. Jesus speaking to the Jews, Jewish leaders. I'm come in my father's name and you don't receive me. That's sad. If another shall come. In his own name, not his father's name, in his own name. You'll follow that joker hook, line, and sinker. That's sad, isn't it? We're so easily deceived. The church is easily deceived with TV preachers today and mess like that. We see some guy, we get enamored with his personality. All of a sudden, he's teaching false teaching, and we follow that guy. Who's doing something in his own name, not in the name of Jesus. That verse got me years ago. Paul, so we had John, we've had Jesus. If this isn't enough case to show you the Antichrist is in the Bible and we're making the case pretty solid today, here's the Apostle Paul, wrote 13 books of your 27 in the New Testament, okay? Paul called him the man of sin, the son of perdition, the wicked one. We just read this, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, we see it. The wicked one, the son of perdition, etc. Keep pushing me, Raj. John referred to him over in the book of Revelation, not just in 1st and 2nd John, also the book of Revelation. He refers to him as the beast. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Chapter 13, verse 2, and the beast which I saw was like a leopard. Symbol, symbolism, things going on here. His feet were as the feet of a bear, mouth the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power. The dragon speaks of Satan in his seat. Great authority. So, am I just killing you this morning? You're like, oh man, I need coffee. I'm sorry, we got coffee for you just a little bit. Hang in there, you're gonna make it. What will the Antichrist be like? So we've been establishing the case that there is an Antichrist, that it will happen, that it already is at work. 
We see it backed up by who? John. Jesus. Paul. Amen. And your own mind. You can see the wicked that's happening in our world. It didn't just start last Sunday. How many of you just can't believe the mess you see today in this world? Let me put your hand up. You just can't believe it. How many would say, maybe you were just not plugged in or something, but it seems like things are just a whole lot worse than they were when I was young. So even if we just do the math there and just go, wow, it seems like things aren't getting better. We're not evolving towards a better planet. I'm telling you that right now. Amen. I don't know how evolution keep pulling this mess off. I call it crap. Excuse me. Okay. I don't know how they keep pulling it off. We are really stupid. We let some people get some degrees and all of a sudden we deny the Bible. We're crazy. Stick with the word, baby. Amen. Come on. What will he be like? What will the Antichrist be like? He'll be great. He'll be great. The actual Antichrist. Is he on the planet now? Very well could be. I know the spirit's at work. I know Satan's at work. It would be no problem for him to step right on the scene right now. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like him? Who's able to make war with him? We're looking for a savior today. We're looking for somebody to fix Washington. We're looking for somebody to bring peace to the Middle East and to fix our world, aren't we? Yes or no? Somebody can come along and have these ideas and do this. We'll follow those folks just like crazy. Follow Jesus. You listening to me say? All right? He'll possess unbelievable intelligence. Won't be stupid. Got it? He'll be a genius. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. It's the number of a man. The number is 600, three score and six. He will have incredible wisdom. He'll be smart. He will be a great communicator. A great communicator. He will be able to see with his words. And to convince there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue three and a half years or 42 months. During the tribulation period that takes place on this earth. He will be attractive. Oh, absolutely. You, you just can't, you can't, you can't do it today unless you're attractive. You understand that? Yes or no? I mean, he is going to be attractive and appealing to people who oppose and exalt himself above all that's called God or that's worship, so that he, as God sets the temple, as God's showing himself that he is God. Very attractive to the folks. People are just going to buy this hook, line, and sinker. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life and the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Attractive to people. He'll come across, say it with me, as what? Come on, help me, church. He'll come across as what? Don't expect him to get up and deny Jesus. No! He's going to hold hands with him and sing kumbaya. It's going to happen. That's why I say, guys, when you... I was on the beach the other day. I think I told you this a couple of weeks ago. I said, my old black Jeep. Just had me some time. Went down some of them old roads on the north end of the beach. You can find them. They're old dirt roads that go nowhere sometimes. And I'm out there, blah, 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 my Jeep, just having me a good time. And in the middle of nowhere, I come across a guy or a family or whoever these people are. I have a sign in the yard, and it's that sign right there. And a circle around it. Always the right way. I wanted to run over with my Jeep. I told you that. I didn't do it. This is what Antichrist will be like. Come across as spiritual. Your way's fine. Your way's fine. And I'm not going to ask you how many have said that before, but many of you in this room have probably told your friends and your family that. When they think you're kooky that you follow Jesus now. You know, and to get the, to get the heat off of you, it's a lot of times we go, you know, that's okay. I mean, what you way you worship, your sure worship. That's okay. I'm not saying everybody has to come to fellowship. I'm not saying everybody even has to go to church. But I am saying everybody must be saved. Everybody must believe in Jesus Christ. Yes or no? Amen. Say. Can we thank the Lord for that clear, just plain Jane truth? Okay. Okay. Keep looking. He comes across the Spirit. He opens his mouth. Is blasphemy against God. That's what he does. He blasphemes his name in his tabernacle on them that dwell in heaven. But he's going to come across the Spirit. At the same time, he's going to be blaspheming God. He will be a phenomenal politician. Phenomenal. Unbelievable. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their what? Their what? Kingdom unto who? 
the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. You're going to come across as a, an incredible politician, someone who can get people together to come together and to agree together. He'll be a force to be reckoned with. He will be a power to be reckoned with, the Antichrist. They worship the dragon in power, etc., saying who's able to make war with him. Very powerful, the Antichrist. Amen? This is far more spooky than them little cobwebs they put at McDonald's this morning. <laughs> I walked through there and the lady said, you got some of them uh, cobweb things from the door on your head. <laughs> well, why you put them there, okay? No, here I am. I got these cobweb things hanging on them because, you know, I'm taller. I go through the door, man, I get the cobwebs on me. Get the cobwebs down. I'm going to tell you what me and Kim did. I could have made a fortune in Pennsylvania. I'm going to tell you that. This is a sideline right here. I was at an uh, Italian restaurant in Pennsylvania. All right? I'm going to tell you right now, it's got a long sidewalk. One of them sidewalks, here's your building. Got a little overhang, got a little post, 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 post. You start up here and walk down the sidewalk. Got it? Y'all got that picture? It was dark. But the lights were on, on the sidewalk. Light, 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 light on the sidewalk. There must have been 10,000 spiders. I had an idea. I had an idea. If we put a fence on this side of that sidewalk, and we charge people $5 at this end, and put some black lights instead of them white lights, I'd have the spookiest spook house in Pennsylvania. I mean, I'm blowing at these spiders, and Kim's like, quit it, stop, quit, quit. I'm blowing these big old spiders. Ooh, they like that. This ain't made up. This was real. Anyway, that's another story. But anyway. <laughs> Woo, how many just don't like spiders like that? How many don't like when you go into the Italian restaurant, you see like 10,000 spiders? I mean, that's like we're going somewhere else. Hey, we're going to get in the car. <laughs> but not me. I went. He's going to be a great talker, politician. He's going to be a blasphemer. He's going to be a great leader. That's what we just learned. He's going to be wicked and lawless, though. And I saw him behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. By the way, a lot of people read Revelation chapter 6 and think this is Jesus. No, this is the Antichrist. He sits on a white horse, has a bow. A crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. When you read carefully, firmly believe this is the Antichrist. He's going to come across as spiritual. He's going to come across as a politician and a great leader. He's going to conquer with diplomacy. When will he come to power? Now, this is where we're going to get a little iffy. Okay, y'all ready or not? So far, everything I've said is right scripture. I believe he'll come to power after the rapture of the church. But there are a whole lot of good people who are incredible theologians who love Jesus Christ and love his word that don't believe the same as I do. They believe the church will go through the tribulation. They believe that many believers will at least go through half of the tribulation. Now, I used to be so dogmatic on this when I was young and thought I knew everything because somebody told me and I believed it. But as I study the scriptures more, I still believe and I hope in my heart that the church will be raptured out before the tribulation period. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But sometimes, guys, we just want things easy. That is our life. We just want it. We even interpret the Bible the easy way. It's not easy. Jesus said, if you didn't, they hated me, they're not going to hate you. They killed me, they're not going to kill you. It's crazy. But I do believe, this is my personal view and it's certainly my hope, for God hath not appointed, where do you say you get that from, Clark? Well, there's not a ton of scriptures, to be honest with you, but I got a few, but not a ton. I don't have a ton. God hath not appointed us to wrath, that period, or the tribulation period, that time of great wrath. That's what it's called, the day of wrath that comes on this earth. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, that word is dead, whether you're alive or dead. So, I mean, that ain't the, that ain't the greatest verse to sleep on right there. We should live together with him. Amen? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. And now you know that withhold, now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. There's another scripture, a little bit, a little bit confusing there. And then shall that wicked one be revealed. 
that wicked one will be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. So there's some verses that certainly believe and teach it like I believe. And for this cause shall God send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And uh, anyway, several verses. How will he become so popular and revered? How will he become to this earth and be so popular? Antichrist. Clark, we won't follow a guy like this. Are you, have you been smoking stuff? People will follow anybody. Say, yes or no? Chaotic world conditions are going to call for his leadership. Things get bad. People, people want answers. They want help. They want relief. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, Jesus speaking. But the end is not your nation is going to rise against nation. It's going to happen kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in different places. Doesn't that sound like the weekend news? Yes or no? Say it. And guys, it's been a long time for me anyway to remember the, some of the threats that we see right now in our world. I mean, everybody, I think, with, a, with half a brain looks at Kim Jong-un or KJU or Rocket Man, as the president calls him. But this guy, you look at him and you got to say, the guy don't look like he's all there. And I have a view. I think the president's trying to make him think he ain't all there either. So it's a crazy person dealing with a crazy person. But I'm just saying... This is, a, this is a shaky world we live in, isn't it? Say. And Russia's back on the rise. You see that. We're worried about their election meddling. We might ought to be worried about what they're doing otherwise. And China. Communist countries that are against the United States. How will he become so popular? His great charisma, ability, energized by Satan is going to gain him recognition. This is going to happen. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan, all power, signs, lying, wonders. Keep going. He will bring peace to the Middle East. He'll bring peace to the Middle East. The Antichrist will bring peace to the Middle East. Man, who wouldn't follow that? Say, finally, we got peace in the Middle East. I'm coming in my Father's name. You don't receive me. But one's going to come one day in his own name, and you're going to receive him. You're going to sign over everything, and you're going to agree. Israel has a great desire for peace. You say, Clark, how do you know that? Did you know Israel signed 21 peace treaties since 1967? 21 peace treaties since 1967. That's a lot of peace treaties, isn't it? Say. Has it worked? Somebody tell me. If anything, they're getting more and more isolated. And now we see our own country many times turning on Israel. You know that, don't you? Because we'll sell out anybody, anything to just get some peace. And that's the spirit of Antichrist. There seems to be almost universal agreement of the establishment of a Palestinian state within the borders of Israel. That's already. Everybody wants that. People believe that. Can't we get some peace? Can't you just have them a little part? Can't they both live together and work together and make all this happen? Perhaps even making East Jerusalem the capital. It's in our news all the time. Israel's going to enter into a peace treaty with the Antichrist who promises and assures them of a lasting peace and tranquility. Finally, finally, peace has come to the Middle East. Oh, thank you. Oh, beautiful. But wait a minute, he's a liar, right? He should confirm the covenant with many for one week or seven years. And in the midst of that week or three and a half years, he's going to cause the sacrifice of the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations. He shall make desolate even unto the consummation and that determination shall be poured upon the desolate. What does that mean? A peace treaty is going to take place. Antichrist will do this. I know this might be getting your head about to explode, but stay here with me. It's going to last for 42 months, and then that peace treaty is going to be broken right in the middle, three and a half years, and all hell's going to break loose on this earth. How many think all hell could break loose on this earth? Let me see some hands. How many years ago probably didn't think all hell could break loose as quickly? Because you got the good U.S. of A. Amen? Say. Now we're thinking all hell could break loose all over. Yes or no? Amen. Well, that's what's going to happen. They're going to go peace and safety and we got a peace treaty and then sudden destruction is going to come as travail upon a woman with a child. They're not going to escape. It's not going to happen. This is the Antichrist. From that time, the daily sacrifice is going to be taken away. The abomination that makes desolate shall be set up. And there should be 1,290 days. A lot of stuff. We're just going through. All hell's going to break loose on this earth. And the land of Israel is going to absolutely be what? Decimated. 
You know there's a lot of hate for Israel. How many knows that? Let me see your hand. A lot of hatred out there for that country. Amen? Yes or no? They're totally surrounded. Get you a map sometime and just look at all the people that hate Israel all around them. And there's one power that's keeping this from probably happening. And it is the United States of America. You believe that? Yes or no? You believe that there was no United States that Israel would even exist today? No. Listen to Jesus. Am I about done, Raj? Not really. You're killing me. <laughs> well, we're going to be done in just a second. I'm going to call it. We certainly had a boatload this morning. Jesus said, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso reads, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. Jesus speaking, prophesying. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to get his clothes. Woe unto them that are with child and to those that are giving suck in those days. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And there's people that don't believe like I believe that used that verse to say we go into the tribulation. Did you see that verse right there? Yeah, that ought to cause you to think about something. But he says... That we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid. But of these times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction is going to come. Just like Jesus said, as travail upon a woman with child. And they're not going to escape. Say with me. But ye. Say but. He said loud. But. But. When this mess happens, I want a big butt to show up. You hear me say? That's what I want. But, 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 you brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You have been given ample warning. Be saved. Put your faith in Christ. Humble yourself. Quit acting like a nut. Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be what? Saved. Don't be crazy. Come on, man. You're not in darkness. You don't have to be deceived. You're children of light. You're children of the day. We're not of night. We're not of darkness. Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch, guys, and be sober. Are you hearing me today? This is an important message for us. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunk are drunken in the night. Wake up. Let us who are of the day be what? Put on the breastplate of what? Believe in Jesus Christ. Love him. And put on the breastplate of what? Love. Love Jesus Christ. Love people. Wake up. And that helmet, that helmet, that salvation. I am saved. I know Jesus Christ. There's no doubt about it. I, when I die, no matter what happens, I'm going to be with him. Amen? For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that we, whether we wake or sleep, live or die, we should live together with him. Keep looking, Raj. Jesus Christ died for me. And I really believe he did. We'll stop right there. Can you say that? Jesus Christ died for me. And I really believe he did. You might say, well, I don't know as much about the Bible as you, preacher. That's okay. I didn't know squat. I cussed my mom out going to church. I mean, come on. You're way ahead of me. But Jesus said, if you'll have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. And the biggest mountain in your life and in my life is a place called hell. And I can take that hell and be cast in the sea because of Jesus' blood for me. He died for me. Amen? Would you do that today? Can you say, Jesus Christ, I believe he really died and I really believe he died for me? Have you done that? Can you say this after a message like this? Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Say that. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. I mean, this is an eye-opener in this morning. By the way, we got more in the coming weeks. You're probably like, oh, man, I got to find somewhere else to go. 
I hope not. I hope you enjoy learning some scripture and seeing something about the Antichrist and seeing parts of the Bible that you might not understand. And maybe we can bring some understanding to it a little bit. Amen. I don't have all the answers, but I think we did a little, we did a pretty decent job today. Amen. Let's praise the Lord for his word. Amen. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand on up. Here we go. Stand on up. Stay with me if you don't mind. If you got to run off to work, I get that. Or if you're volunteering, I understand. But otherwise, let's be reverent. And let's close our service with respect to the Lord and to others around us. There's never a time that I do this that I, I'm not reminded that there are people in our room right now that's hanging between heaven and hell. And there's not a thing I can do other than preach the word. I can encourage. I can scream it. I can do everything I can. But at the end of the day, it's your decision. The Bible said if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. The greatest verse may be in the Bible. At least people think so. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You've heard me. I've hammered it today. I've gone over it like probably 20 times in the message. Humble yourself today. Quit hanging on to some so-called heritage or whatever it might be or some false belief just to appease your own pride. God says in his word, the proud I will reject, but the humble I will lift up. If you'll humble yourself right now and say, Lord, I'm going to take you at your word. I don't understand it all, Lord. But I believe in you, Jesus. I really do. This is me talking. I believe. Not just the preacher. Not just the church folk or my family. But I believe. If you're ready to do that, can I lead you in a prayer? If you're ready to do that, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer. You say it your way. I'm just trying to help. I can't do this for you. I love you though. And this is a hellraiser talking to you. This is a guy that didn't grow up in church or believe in Jesus. And I can today stand before you and say, I love you because Jesus Christ loved me. And he loved my drunk mama. And he loved me even though the wicked things I had done. I'm here to tell you, I'm standing with you next to you. He loves you. But he will not listen to your proud talk. You must humble yourself. You ready? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I've messed up, screwed up, done a whole lot wrong, Lord. But I ask you for forgiveness. And I ask you because you're the only one that can. And Jesus, best I know how, I put my faith in you, Jesus. Not in some past belief. Not in some heritage. No, Lord. I put my belief in you, Jesus Christ. I believe you're God's only son. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. And Jesus, I believe you love me. I believe you love me. That's why I can talk to you, Lord. I believe you love me. I don't understand it all, Lord. You know I don't. But Lord, right now, best I know how, I put my faith in you. My faith in you. Not in me. Not in some church. Not in some preacher. I put my faith in the only one that deserves it. Jesus. Come into my life, Lord. Save me. Save me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving me and saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. With heads bowed one last moment. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you today, preacher, and I meant it from the bottom of my heart. I did that, and that was me doing it. Not somebody else doing it. I did it. Lots of hands in the house this morning. Praise God. If you've done it before, or this is the first time, I don't know. I, that's not my business. My business is to try to get you to go to heaven. Amen? Come on. We want to snatch as many from hell as we can. Amen?
Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. We thank you for your word. Lord, thank you that even a subject like this, the Antichrist, Lord, I just thank you for the freedom that I can get up here and talk just in my own way and take your word. And Lord, I believe we learn today. We learn. We certainly didn't learn everything, but we learn. And I pray you'll help us to hide this word in our heart. I pray the one thing that's going to come out of this, Lord, for sure, for sure, for sure, is that we're not going to have the spirit of Antichrist. We're not going to, we're not going to be wishy-washy and weak when it comes to Jesus Christ is the only way to God the Father. Please, God. Please, God. Help us be true lights and help us to stand for you. Help us not to be two-faced. Here on Sunday, oh, we stand for you, but with our family and friends, we don't, you know, whatever. Please, God. Help us not in any way follow the Antichrist. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, church. God bless you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo! That was rough. You did fine. You made it. Amen. Come on. God bless you. I'm right here. If I can help you or be a blessing to you. If you got all kinds of views, then don't come see me because I'm wore out, okay? You hear me?